We've got the first reported death in the United States from coronavirus, and we're starting to see some presumptive cases across the country where patients haven't traveled anywhere they could have gotten the virus. So it's starting to look a little mysterious and a little bit scary. We've got Dr. Kristen Mondi with Dell Medical School at the University of Texas at Austin here. How are you? Good. Greetings. Yeah, thanks for coming this morning. Sure. So I think we kind of wanted to talk about kids a little bit. There are no doubt a lot of worried parents out there. What do they need to know about sure. kids and coronavirus? So first of all, what we know mainly about kids comes from reports from China where they've had the largest outbreak and there was a recent study out of China, their Center for Disease Control, and really only about 1% of the affected person have been children under 10. And even children between 10 and 20, that was only about 1%, so very small numbers. Also, they seem to have fewer symptoms than adults, whereas some adults might have more pneumonia symptoms Kids seem to just have symptoms like a common cold, maybe some fever, cough, runny nose. So that's all really reassuring. Okay. And I know it's going to be quite a long time before we can get a vaccine for this, a couple months, yeah. at least a year. But as far as prevention goes, for folks who might be wondering about that, anything they can do? So I think reinforcing a good hand hygiene and respiratory hygiene with your children, I think... Uh, telling them to wash their hands with soapy water frequently. Usually the CDC recommends 20 seconds, which is hard. Sing the happy birthday Certainly song. Certainly for my right. children, um, if that's hard. Also hand sanitizer works. I think the CDC has also recommended thinking about commonly disinfecting objects that we touch a lot. So children's cell phones, mm. laptops, door handles, maybe the refrigerator door, right, right. Uh, faucets, things like that. Also, if cover your cough and your sneeze with a tissue and throw that away promptly, then wash your hands. I think if your kids are sick, please don't send them to school. Or if you're sick, don't go to work. And I think just reassuring children, keeping them on a routine. I do think that if we see widespread coronavirus, there could be some inconveniences for children and parents. I suppose it's possible that some schools could close or after school activities temporarily. Mm. And so Parents might need to think about how to work remotely while they care for kids at home, things like that. And they're not more susceptible, are they, or are they? They are. They seem to be less susceptible. That's Again, good. just 1% in, in this study out of China, so less susceptible. And for reinforcing those habits for your kids, they do like to see someone set an example for them. Right. So, yes, you know, make sure you're example. doing all this stuff, too. Uh, wash your hands well. Uh, Use hand sanitizer if you don't have soap available. Have tissue boxes in your house. Mm -hmm. I think one other thing that came up was the question about face masks. Right. And Can't find them anywhere anyway. Them. Well, the Surgeon General just over the weekend was really strongly urging people not to go out and buy face masks. Okay. We need to save them, save them for our first responders and for healthcare personnel. Okay. And that really they're not going to be effective if you're well. I think people that wear face masks, the face mask should be reserved for people that are caring for sick people. And I think if a person is sick, a face mask can help uh, contain their cough, keep them from coughing on other people. But otherwise, please don't go out and create a run on face masks. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Dr. Mondi, thank you so much. You're welcome.